So you may be asking yourself, what if two of these vehicles tie each other? The tiebreaker is the combined performance and efficiency event. The basic features of the event are uh, you can't go over 70 miles per hour and there's a chicane on the backstretch, which is basically just like a you know, fancy word for a little turny thing. You may also be asking yourself, what about the mainstream class and the tandem class? Um, well, there's only one team left in each of those classes and they're not actually gonna be able to tie themselves in validation. Th this race today was just a spectacular race. It was five people racing for $2.5 million. The plan was to have whoever had gotten this far to make the last race, uh, the last event, a race where uh, the best in each class would, would come out from a performance standpoint. In the alternative side-by-side, -side, we had five teams that had gotten this far, uh, five different vehicles. It's a staggered start, uh, but the lowest time wins. But the key is that there are um, penalties applied for various things. If you would uh, knock over a cone in the chicane, or if you would go too fast or too slow, they also would get a penalty, a substantial penalty, for being below 100 mile per gallon equivalent. And, and that's a little bit more difficult because it's an aggressive drive cycle. It's a performance drive cycle, so these teams are trying to go as fast as they can, uh, and that tends to bring their uh, efficiency down. The race started, and in relatively short order, there was a surprise. Aptera was out. The Lee Ion car, which I thought was going to be in the running for it, started to fall back. And it looked to me like the Finnish team had it in control. Aptera got back in the race. They had discovered their issue, fixed it, and went back out. Somewhere in that race, TW4XP, the German team, was quite heroically driving a three-wheeler at speeds that I really didn't expect. They went through that thing, and you really could see the virtue of low weight, low mass. I mean, they just went through. Zap was quite good. Zap, I don't know if they ever got second. They certainly were in third place very, very strongly for, for a long time. But it became very clear that the two cars that were engineered the best, the Lee Ion and the Finnish, would race. And it looked like the Finnish had it in control. But Lee Ion kept chipping at it. The Lion car uh, was back uh, about five to 10 seconds. In, in the last five or six laps, you saw them go a little bit faster every lap and really made up that difference and just enough to get past, really literally on the last lap, the last quarter of the last lap is when they, uh, when they took the lead. I'll retract my statement yesterday when I said that a couple seconds in the chicane is not gonna make a difference. That's right. Um, the difference between Race About and Team Lion, 0.179 seconds. So it, with the time is Team Race about. So Team Lion was the fastest by less than two tenths of a second. Two and a half million dollars. You know, a bunch of guys that didn't necessarily race before. Um, equipment, prototypes. You know, these guys were squealing tires. <laughs> these guys were running the machines right at the temperature limits. Technology pushed to its edge as demonstrated by the fact that only three cars finished. You know, it shows you how hard this is. It's, it's right at the edge of what can be done. A lot of, lot of lessons. The real message is you can't do it with an ordinary car. You're gonna have to rethink the car first. The other message is electric cars are here to stay. They can really do it. Um, I, I really do believe that this race was a historic moment. I think the race of the century, or certainly a race of the century, the green race of the century. Can you feel that? Can you feel that, folks? That's drama. So that's the combined performance and efficiency. We've still got two events left. We've got Coast Down, which is like, they make the cars coast to a stop. It's very exciting. Um, and we've got Final Validation. Final Validation counts for 50% of each team's score. So it's a big deal. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Um, and then the winner is going to be announced in September, so be on the lookout. Check out the website for all the other videos we've been posting, social media updates for all the teams, and cast your vote in the fan favorites competition for a chance to win $3,000.